Okay. Well, hello, everybody. This is Randy Baxter. I'm the president of Asset Positioning Services, and our, our topic today is going to be marketing by workshop, and we're going to be looking at will awareness. I have a couple of things I want to talk about first before we get started. Um, you know, you already know uh, the company culture that we have, and our, our mission, my mission today is to share with you all my experience and why I think that you should consider uh, marketing instead of one-on-one, -on -one, what I call one-to-many, and uh, we'll get to that in just a minute. Um, but, but today, before we get too started, I want to tell you a story about an island of monkeys. So one monkey in particular. Um, you see, there's this island. These monkeys were used for experiments on an unnamed government island. And the goal was to find out what the effects of starvation on ingenuity were. So, you know, each and every day, the scientists would go down to the beach and scatter the only food source on that island, which was rice. And they would throw it haphazardly along the sandy shore. And those hungry monkeys, they would pick it up one kernel at a time. And it took all day to get enough calories to survive. So, you know, the dial freight was, was pretty high, but it was recorded each morning. Those scientists would say, okay, we fed these monkeys this rice and so many of them starved to death. Uh, but they would do that before they distributed the new food source. So one day, one of the monkeys followed the scientists and watched the distribution of the rice. And when the food was distributed, the surviving monkeys began their daily chore of survival. They began picking up those little tidbits of rice. And the observant monkey did something different. Instead of picking up the rice one at a time, he scooped the sand and rice up in his hands and ran to the water and dumped it in the sea. The sand sank and the rice floated up. And the intelligent monkey gathered the floating rice and had a handful of rice quickly and efficiently. And that's sort of what we're going to be talking about today. That monkey started gaining weight while the odor slowly wasted away because he did things a little bit differently. So, you know, and I've talked to you so much about it, but the Family Tree Asset Positioning Go-To First Interview done in workshop format does just that. It leads the suspects to volunteer as prospects, allowing you to help them make a decision they know they need to make. And it's no longer a battle. It's a process. So, so what, what I want to teach you all today and show you all today, and, and Mr. Mills is going to help us understand today, is how to be one of the smart monkeys and how to uh, not, not always go one-on-one, -on -one, but start out with one-to-many and see what happens. So, you know, if you engage people in a workshop, with what they expect, and in this, in this situation, it would be will awareness. It, it's what they are able to discern and confirms their projections. And we talked about this a little bit last week. It settles them into predictable patterns of responses and occupying their minds while you wait for the extraordinary moment, that which they cannot anticipate. They don't know that they're going to want to make an appointment when they come to your uh, workshop. Matter of fact, they're probably thinking they don't want to. And it's your job to get them to want to make that appointment. So, and we talked about this last week. It's the power of understanding of the definition of the prospect that sets the stage for this process. You know, uh, y'all have heard me talk so much about the suspect and the prospect and, and the client and the advocate. But if you understand what you're intending to do when you go in and do that workshop and you do it correctly, you're going to have a pretty good response. So, and you've seen my spaceship guy last week, the fact that the suspect has agreed to discuss your topic of choice on a favorable basis is what makes them a prospect. It's your presentation in that workshop. You got to remember, you're entering a battlefield. The battlefield that we entered the past couple of weeks with our workshop is we had to, we had to deal with other brokers. We had to deal with attorneys. We had to deal with people who already had their estate plans. It is a battlefield, but if you go in correctly, you win that battle, but you have to understand the terrain. You have to understand what your mission is and, and what those people are actually looking for when they attend a, 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 a workshop called Will Awareness. So, so remember now, that suspect, is, he's worthless to you until he becomes a prospect. 
And that prospect has to decide to talk to you on a favorable basis. That basis becomes more positive or less negative over time if you do a good job. And it becomes less positive and more negative if you don't, if you don't do a good job in the workshop. And I was talking to Frank Divers the other day, and he, he said, Randy, don't recommend these workshops to uh, licensees who are not prepared or who do not understand this, your sales presentation. And he's absolutely right. But I'll be honest with you, the family tree asset position go to first interview done in group format is one of the best workshop presentations you can make. So, so if you know this, it, it, it's what makes your workshop a valuable opportunity for you and the attendees. Both sides win. They come for something, not sure what it is, and they leave with exactly what they wanted. So, so to be in control of the workshop, you have to understand this process. You have to know yourself and your suspects. You have to use the proper tools, use the unique mechanisms that we ask you to use. And, and you're about to meet Mr. Mills here, and he's got a very unique mechanism that, that works very well. But then you also have to take your unique mechanism, your agenda, your process review, the script, and the power phrases. You have to take those to the party. And we talked about Sun Tzu last week modification of the wisdom of Sun Tzu, the art of the sale is of vital importance to your career, your income, and your mindset. The road to success or failure. Hence, these tools that we're about to talk about, they cannot be ignored. You just have to decide, is this the route you want to take? And I hope you're going to learn what that route is. We've, we've talked about our industry so much. Uh, let's just go on and talk about uh, last week when we talked about Sun Tzu, he mentioned to win 100 victories in 100 battles is not the skill. But to subdue the prospect without fighting is the skill. When they come to the workshop, their guards are up. And if you entertain them and relax them and make them feel good and make them look you in the eye and entertain them and make them laugh a little bit, you, you're going you're gonna to convert some of these suspects to prospects. Because you see, your prospect who, after the workshop, if they have agreed to meet with you on a favorable basis, you got to understand that they want you to lead them to a favorable decision in which they have a win, but only if you set the stage correctly. Now, that's what's going on inside the workshop. But you know what? First of all, you have to, you have to get them to the workshop. So, and remember, I talked to you last week, if you attack what is weak, which is the lack of knowledge, when this person or persons agrees to meet in most cases, it's a proper design of their current estate plan. If you make the presentation correctly, after this workshop, they're going to want you to talk to them about their current plan, not the one you want to sell them, but the one they have right now. So anyway, uh, if you build your prospect a golden bridge to ask for help, they will ask for help. So you do it with a properly designed workshop. And I hope that that's what you're here to hear today. Because today, I want to introduce you to our guest. Uh, and, and Mr. Mills, I've never met you personally, but we talked and and I've uh, been very impressed with your work. It's Mr. Jeff Mills. How you doing, sir? I think he's on mute. All right. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. How you doing? Okay, wonderful. Thanks for having yeah. me, Mr. Baxter. Okay. Well, let me tell everybody, I met Mr. Mills as a referral from Frank Divers at Estate Docs Pro. Frank had come to Knoxville and we had a boot camp uh, for my licensees. And Frank told me about the marketing program some of his licensees were using for workshop marketing. And, and uh, uh, then he introduced me and told me about Mr. Mills. So I seized the opportunity to implement Jeff Mills' process. And, and, that, and you know what? It worked. And I'm going to do it again. And I promise you, if you will consider what you're about to hear, you'll want to do it over and over. So, so. I'm going to be asking Mr. Mills a few questions, and then he will introduce you to his process, and then we can open this up to direct questions. So, Mr. Mills, can you tell us a little bit about your company? Yeah. The name of my company is MBI Direct Mail Plus uh, Digital. We've been in business 35 years, a um, uh, large company. We're a full-service printer. Uh, I have a 32,000-foot facility. I run anywhere from about 60 to 80 employees. Um, this particular program is done digitally which we hired a guy from MIT uh, that is just kind of a, uh, a Facebook guru. And uh, 
the program has evolved um, basically by accident. I used to do a lot of direct mail for attorneys and uh, advisors that we were doing direct mail with dinner. Then we started doing direct mail educational events. And then we started marketing with Facebook and realized that the Facebook was for this particular program was the most efficient way, cost effective way to get attendees to come in. And uh, uh, all my groups switched to the, uh, the, the digital program. And then about, I guess it was probably about six or seven months ago, uh, I came across uh, Frank's program and we were strictly, I was doing it all for digital. And uh, once we, uh, I'd never heard of the online software that the advisors could do. And once we started uh, doing it for the, uh, for the advisors, they realized that they had a program that they could make two or three times their marketing money by selling the online trust before they do any financial work. So it was a totally different concept than doing like a social security workshop or general retirement where you would pay for something and you were really having four to five, six month money before you had 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 set the appointment, had sold the annuity product or whatever product you were selling. So uh, this kind of came came about by accident, but it is um, just popping up all across the nation. I'm doing workshops in uh, you know most of the cities now, and uh, they're kind of locking up territories, which is one reason why Randall wanted me to to get you involved because with this program you can try it once. Uh, if you like it, you can basically lock up your territory and nobody else can do it for a year in your area. You have it, you have it locked up. Uh, Jeff, can you tell me a little bit about the, you mentioned time frame where some people pay their money and they don't get a return for six months. Can you talk a little bit about the time frame on this program? Well, on this program, uh, it's very quick from the standpoint, I need about 17 days prior to whatever workshop dates you have. Um, it takes me about 24 to 48 hours to get the ads approved. Then we start marketing. I like to have two weekends uh, of marketing. Uh, then while we're doing the marketing and they're signing up, we do a five system follow-up where we send them out text, email, and a phone call to invite them, to remind them about the workshop and the dates. And we've been running about a 60, 65% show up rate uh, uh, to, to a sign ups. So on this particular program, on the average, it's been getting about 120 to 130 signups. Have ran as high as 260 signups for uh, you know for one you know one set of workshops. I think our numbers were just exactly what you said. I think we wound up with like 127 signups and and uh, maybe what 30 no shows. Uh, well, and yours there. was even Randall. Yours was even an exception from the standpoint of um, you did yours only daytime, which. Uh, you know, I recommend having, you know, an evening uh, workshop or two in there. If I'm not mistaken, you did four workshops and had them all during the day, which right. which kind of limits your attendees. But it also there's a pro to it. If people are willing to come to your workshop during the day, it's much easier to set an appointment and get them to come in your office during the day. And I think the next one we do, we're going to follow your advice and, and do one of the evenings just so we can uh, verify that. Uh I didn't pick evenings because I, I fall asleep early in the evening. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so so let's talk about the cost a little bit. Okay. Um, um, it's, I think, go ahead. It's a flat $3,500. Uh -huh. um, uh, so, you know, there's no additional cost. That includes all the follow-ups, uh, all the reservations. Now, one thing that makes this really work, and we haven't got into this, uh, probably a lot of you advisors out there, you you're familiar with a lot of nonprofits out there. There's SOFA, Coffee, AFIA. I have one called AFC, Association of Financial Consultants. And most of these non these nonprofits charge the advisors anywhere from about fifteen hundred to five thousand dollars a year to be a member. Well, uh, our independent nonprofit uh, AFC it only costs you two hundred dollars to join, and all the marketing comes from the nonprofit. Whether if whether if it's direct mail, you can use nonprofit postage, which is tremendous savings. For the digital marketing, it is all marketing from AFCeducators.org. Uh, the marketing does not mention your name, does not mention your company. It is strictly coming from the nonprofit as an educational workshop. Do not provide dinner. Any to any additional cost. It is thirty five hundred dollars. You know, plus if you have to rent the uh, rent the uh, room. But by being a member of the nonprofit, 
we will send you out a certificate. And a lot of times you can get into libraries, community centers at a discount or no charge because you're a member of a nonprofit. The, the only extra cost that we had, I think, was uh, $25 for the room four times. And then we bought some supplies and things where, uh, and uh, I did some first class uh, stuff that we handed out that cost a couple hundred dollars. So, so, uh, but uh, one thing that I was really impressed with what you did was, was it was all turnkey. And those names started popping up on our appointment list. And we started getting emails saying how many people had registered and, and uh, how many in the morning, how many in the afternoon, how many the next week. And I, uh, it was just amazing to realize that, that, and, you know, if you divide 125 into $3,500, you've got a, a 30 or $40 lead cost where a lot of people are paying 200 or 300 or 400 for the people who show up. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so, okay, well, let's go on to the next question. What else do the licensees need to know? And you've already talked, is there an, an association to join? Is there anything else? No, other than, um, you know, I would just send them out, uh, you know, new client paperwork. We would get them involved in our system. And, you know, they would provide me with, uh, you know, the location, the dates, and the times of the workshop. Okay. All right. And, and uh, let's talk about uh, if, I wanted to, if I wanted to have one as soon as possible today, what is the soonest date you would pick? Uh, about 17 to 18 days from now. If you if you okay. had your location and times locked up, uh, you could let me know and you could be doing it 17 days from now. Wow. Okay. All right. So uh, that's pretty quick. So they could actually spend their money in first of March and have their money returned if they sold a couple of state plans uh, uh, by the end of March or early April. Absolutely. Cool. All right. So, so are libraries the best venue? Um, anything that comes across as educational. Um, libraries, community centers, colleges, I've done them at VFWs, I've done them at senior centers, community centers, uh, any of those that work. I don't recommend going to a venue where you, where you're having to pay, like at a hotel. It kind of takes away from the, uh, the nonprofit, uh, you know, kind of, uh, promotional, you know, and uh, I, marketing. I, I like the library because those people are we're coming to a place of learning to learn something that they might not have been aware of before they showed up. Well, one of the nice things about it versus doing a dinner type seminar, which probably a lot of your agents have done. Um, the people that are, that we're marketing to that are coming in off the educate for an educational workshop, they come in with their hands down. They're not coming in with well, their hands up. Um, they want to learn, uh, you know, they're, they're wanting to hear what the, uh, um, what the advisor has to say. And it's a much easier conversion from an attendee to appointment to a client if you're doing it at an educational venue, rather doing it at a Ruth Chris dinner or Fleming's or something like that, where the people are going in, they know you're trying to sell them something. They get in touch with you. Oh, boy, you also, you missed a lot. Um, yeah, uh, well, easiest, they can uh, send me an email. Uh, my email is jmills, M-I-L-L-S at mbi mary boy indian directmail.com or you can just call me on my cell uh take calls all the time 407 592 7420 okay uh and that uh, we'll send that out but uh i wanted to go back one screen about the libraries and the best venue uh and we talked about all the different educational facilities before we lost you there and, and I had just was just talking about uh, I like the libraries because people go there to learn. So it was an easy transition there. And and uh, if you pick the right library, they'll have good facilities. And and, and so uh, what I would like to do right now is hand this over to anybody out there listening to see if they have any questions for you, if that's OK. okay. Any questions out there? There should be a bunch. Uh, if you're a licensee, now's the time to ask some questions. Um, there was a question about uh, Lonnie said, which days of, of which are the best days of the week to do the workshop? I have done them and had great success with pretty much every day, but uh, Friday, uh, excuse me, Sunday. I've had people do them Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday during the day, and I've had them do them Saturday during the day. I've had a lot of people that will do them one day. They will do a like a one o'clock, a three o'clock, and a six o'clock, and they'll knock it out all in one day. Okay, all right. Um, we 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 had 
I will tell you that our crowds grew each day. You know, we, uh, we, we did choose and we did, uh, Thursday morning, Thursday afternoon, and then the next week, Thursday morning, Thursday afternoon. And our biggest crowd was the, the, the fourth time. I don't, I don't know. Does that matter for you or. Uh, um, usually, usually the biggest crowd is the first one. Randall, you actually did it a little bit different than most. Um, you broke it up over two weeks. Um, yes. 99% of all the ones I do it, they all do it during one week. Okay. Um, uh, and the reason why is the marketing works because I'm hitting the marketing hard the weekend before your first workshop starts. In your case, you already had one taking place and I'm, uh, and I'm marketing for the next one. So it kind of gets a little more confusing. It works better if you do it all in one week. Okay. Although your response was good and you were very happy with it. There's actually a little bit better way to skin the cat than the way you set up the original one. Okay. So you, you would say Tuesday uh, and Thursday in the same way. Tuesday, Thursday, Monday, Wednesday, all three workshops in one day, you know, whatever, uh, you know, a lot of times it's hard to find the library's availability. So you have to be a little bit more flexibility. Most of the advisors out there are always trying to get due Tuesday and Thursday. Um, and I found that Mondays are open. If it's not, if you're not competing against Monday night football, um, you know, you can do three workshops in one day and just knock it out and and have three uh, three workshops that are filled with people. Well, I, I want to tell you why I did those two Thursdays. Um, I spent a lot of time talking to the licensees about building momentum. And my issue there was I didn't have um, two days to put in. <laughs> so right. I, you know, I had to put them in separate weeks. Uh, but But I think the next time we pick one, we'll go ahead and do Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's just at the time, I think I had uh, paid you uh, in December 31 just to get a tax deduction on some of the income. And then and then uh, we set it up for um, mid-February uh, because I knew how much work I had to get done in January. And uh, so, so all you licensees that are out there listening, if you want or need momentum, do the Tuesday, Thursday. You'll be busy. I think we wound up with, uh, and I don't know if these numbers are exactly right, but out of the 127 attendees, we had uh, 33 asked for appointments. Uh, we've already sold uh, uh, one estate plan, but it's just been not long. And and uh, we had a couple of cancellations, but I, we still have a mess of appointments going into the next two, three weeks. So, so you folks that are sitting there on the sidelines and saying, hey, I need some first interviews because we sell on a front end and a back end sale. But you can't get to the back end sale unless you have the front end sale. And and what Jeff Mills is, is saying to you uh, will put you in front of a situation that I like to call one to many. That's where you throw the sand and the rice in the water. And now the rice floats up and you got a big handful of rice instead of one kernel at a time. And all of a sudden, you do, it doesn't hurt your feelings when somebody cancels. It doesn't uh, hurt your feelings if somebody doesn't buy because you know you've got all these other people that you're going to see. And so the value is really there. If if we had 33 appointments at $3,500, we wound up spending just a little over $100 per appointment. And that's cheap. Very, very cheap. And 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 they're good appointments. We had good quality people that showed up. Um, well, but another thing, and, Randall, which I, we haven't talked since you... Uh, uh, since you did your workshop, but we have a, it's a very good dashboard that has everybody listed. So let's say, for example, you have 120 signups and you ended up with, we'll say 75 people that showed up or whatever. Um, you know, you've got another, you know, 45, 50 people that you can send, that you can market to that had an interest that wanted to learn about well awareness and a trust where Absolutely. you might record your workshop that you're doing, send them out a recording where they can watch, uh, you know, the live event. They just couldn't, you know, they just might not have been able to be there, but there's still good potential, uh, potential prospects that you might be able to get business out of them. Even the ones that didn't show. Yeah. I think we've already uh, sent an email inviting them to another day at that same library, but because a lot of them said they had things happen to them that they couldn't show. And, and we realized that they will come if we ask them. So, so we're, yeah, we're going to go ahead and have another workshop just on the for the no shows, right? Wonderful. And I think it, it'll fill up. So, 
Uh, how about other questions out there? I know, I know you, some of you folks have got questions on your mind. So I what's question, the optimal population? I'm sorry, say optimal? that again. Mark it into. Uh, uh, is, it, is this Robert? No, well, it could be Robert, but uh, all right. So I've got a couple. Uh, can we do this 100% virtual or do we need the library for any specific purpose? Um, I am in the process. I have one of, one of Frank's advisors that he referred over, that he referred over to me in uh, um, uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. They've already done two or three with me. They love the program, but they originally wanted to do it webinar based. So uh, I am in the process of having my team set it up. They are going to do one web based here in the next uh, two or three weeks. I will have the capability to do it to send like a pre recorded uh, loom or uh, or whatever you might want, where we could we could do it virtually. All right, so, so my next question is: Can but we I do but both? I do not have experience with it yet to give you any kind of numbers. Okay. Can we do both? Can we be having it virtually and in the library at the same time? So in other words, for people who are geographically not in our area or can't make it and they want to stay at home, do we have the capabilities of doing it both ways at the same time, virtual and think, live? Yes, I would think we could do that. I I would have to get with my team, but yes. But now when we're marketing <laughs> the, um, we are marketing them within about a 10 or 15 mile radius of wherever you're at. So we don't market it all over the country. You know, they are marketed, you know, cent in your central location, you know, so that they can obviously conveniently drive to the, uh, to the live workshop. Okay. I'd like to add something to that. Uh, I'm so old Thank school. Uh, I'm, I'm very old school in the way I do presentations, but I have found that the eye contact and the smiles that you get live tell you a lot about the people that are there. Uh, but I have never done one digitally. Um, and I'm not saying you shouldn't. Uh, I'm just saying I really like to get in front of a crowd and talk to them and and see their reactions and watch them nod their heads and 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 agree. Hundred percent. Yeah. Um, okay. How about another question? Somebody's out there has got another question. Um, Jeff, can you repeat your telephone number? Someone has asked for it in the chat. Oh, okay. Yeah. Four zero seven five nine two seven four two zero. Okay, so it's four zero seven five nine seven four two zero. No, no, no. Four zero seven five nine two seven four two zero. There you go. Okay. That's it. Oh, uh, okay. Jay's got it. Great. <laughs> and then here is Jeff's email address. That is correct. Okay. <laughs> Jeff, and, uh, can you? I'm sorry. Go ahead. And, and a little bit about me. Um, I like to say I'm not just a pretty face selling junk mail. Um, I actually have some experience in the financial industry. Years ago, I used to have a Series 7 to 24. I took companies public, had an investor relations company, an insurance agency. So I actually understand annuities, AUM, life products. So it helps me in creating the marketing. So, uh, you know, I, I actually understand what you guys are doing and what you're trying to do. Any other questions? Hey, uh, yes. Can you hear me? This is Ed Kibble. Yes, sir. Uh, hey, hey, Jeff. Hey, what kind of, uh, uh, if you will, net are you using? What kind of questions? What kind of? Uh, how are you? How are you approaching people? What are they seeing? Are there is there a survey? How are they? You know, how, how do you get people to be interested and go? Yep, I want to do that. What's the? I, I'm not sure what I'm asking you, but what what are you? Um, how, what, what am I how, marketing? How are you finding them? Okay. Um, well, basically, you know, through demographics of people around uh, whatever venue that you're holding the location at, and also by ages. But now, one thing I will tell you, and Randall will probably uh, attest to this from the one he did, when you're doing these, um, you will till you will get a little bit older crowd, uh, more like 68, 69, 70, and you'll be a little bit more uh, woman heavy instead of men. You'll tend to get more women than men. Just because right. more women are on Facebook than men, that's that that ran true, and 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 that's okay because those people have most of the money, right? Right. Yeah. Now, what we do with marketing that, you know, I don't know if it's unique, but what we found that works best for us is we try to do most of our marketing on the weekend and, and in the evenings. 
And the reason being is we're running, we're getting about a 60, 65% show up rate, which is way higher than average. But the reason why we market in the evenings and the weekends is we found that we have a much better chance of getting the husband and wife sitting together when they're getting this message on Facebook or, or YouTube or however we're marketing it. Mm. Um, and they're making the commitment together instead of, you know, uh, the wife mm. getting it at 930 on Tuesday morning and say, oh, I think I want to go to this. And then she tells her husband about it a couple of days later and he says, I don't have any interest. So, um, you know, we tend to market, you know, like I said, weekends and evenings and it's worked a lot better for us. I have a question. Okay. Is there is there a maximum room size that you look to fill up or what what occupation does your marketing, you know, attempt to fill the room size? Um. Well, there's not really so much of a maximum. Uh, I'm more worried about the, uh, I mean, see, the minimum is the maximum. Like, let's say, for example, if you have a room that only holds 20, 25, um, you know, you need to have at least four workshops because I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get you 40, 50 people to sign up for each workshop. So you need to have a room that has a capacity of holding at least 30, but I really like a room that holds at least 40. Our last uh, our last session that we had, we had to take the tables out so we could put more chairs in. So, um, you know, um, and and if you stay in the same library, I think your reputation will grow. So, um, uh, but but what I found was was, uh, you know, our our crowds grew. That's that, that's all I knew. <laughs> our crowds grew, uh, and I, I'm very excited for Jeff. Go ahead. Yeah, Randall Mike. Uh, hey, Mike. I'm, basically, I'm assuming you're using the PowerPoint presentation uh, in this type of scenario. I sent, I did the first two without the PowerPoint, and I did the uh -huh. second two with the PowerPoint. Um, I, you know, I've done the family tree asset positioning presentation so many times, I could probably do it blindfolded. So, uh, but but there were a couple of times when I was glad I had the PowerPoint. So, because sometimes I get a little brain foggy and I needed to look up and see where we were. Okay. So, uh, the, the, but, but the presentation, uh, that you make the group that I do that I recommend is, is, is almost exactly the same as the, the individual presentation, except when I go to page two, I don't go so in depth. I just tell them what we look for instead of actually doing it. Because I, handing, I, go ahead. Yeah. Without the PowerPoint, are you just basically handing out a copy of your confidential that they're seeing what you're asking, or are you just going through it? Well, I had an agenda. And I okay. uh, I gave him a piece of graph paper with a circle the size of a quarter drone on it, and I had a flip chart, and uh, I told the story, and sometimes That's I had lived a little bit and told some other stories. Um, you know, it, I, I like both. I, I like both of them. Uh, okay. I think the fourth one we did, we did the PowerPoint and the flip chart because people uh, like to see how I, I drew the drawings. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Randall, so I can print up booklets for you. Um, I'm sorry. If you, have, if you have like, you know, uh, slides that you would like to have in a booklet, you know, I can print uh -huh. up an eight page booklet or whatever you'd want that um, since I am a full service printer, at a very cost, oh. cost effective price that they can pass out. OK, cool. So we would just send you the PowerPoint. Yeah, I can just print you up a booklet booklet that they could follow along with. Cool. Uh, uh, we may do that because I was going to go ahead and, and uh, the next day or so book the next uh, the next presentation. I'd like to have those little books. It'd be fun. It, it'd make us look stronger and 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 more organized and a little more professional. I think right. I think that's a good and idea. And I can print them up with you know with the AFC logo with the nonprofit lo logo and all that stuff, and uh, looks very professional and and gives all the advisors a little bit more credibility when they're doing the workshop. Yeah, uh, yeah. We uh, what we did was we also had the agenda. Uh, all, you know, uh, ours were just on four pieces of paper, but I had the agenda and our primary promise. And we, we had a quiz that we did uh, that that all my licensees, that quiz is on your website. And it's about the one that you need a will or a trust. And they all took their quiz and they all drew their uh, um, family trees. And then there's another brochure on their website that's for uh, last four must haves. And, and uh, so, you know, everything that they want is probably on your website right now. But I, I like the idea of having it in a little booklet form. Susan Schroeder has a question. Susan, yes. Yes, hi, thank you so much for the info. I, my question um, entails whether you, so 
I understand that you're wanting us to have a location for the seminar, but as far as the contacts that are made, um, do we just provide zip codes, a few zip codes, and how many names are you um, gathering, contacting for us, and then do we have access to the, the whole list, or how, how does that all work? Well, that, that would be more direct mail oriented. Um, we're, this is Facebook. So we just basically, depending on the density of the people around you, um, we're going to market within a 10 or 15 mile radius of people around the venue that you're having the workshop at. And Susan, I, we got a full list of everybody that was going to attend with their emails, phone numbers. and that Oh yeah. You, you, you will have a dashboard that has everybody that signed up that you have access to. 24 seven. That is your information. Nobody else has. And you don't so, have to give them back, do you? So you're, you're marketing through Facebook though. On this particular time? program. I can do it with mail too. I can target, you know, I can target with mail. I have some people that do it with direct mail, but I have just found that with, with this particular program, with the digital, um, I am getting a much better bang for the buck for the advisor. And it's all about return on investment. You know, if exactly what Randall said, if I can fill a room full, three or four workshops, fill them up for you, and you can get appointments booked for basically a hundred dollars a head, um, that's cheap marketing. Very, and I, okay. I highly recommend it. Um, you know, not everybody has thirty five hundred dollars put into it, but it's but when you look at marketing expenses, that is a very low cost marketing. Um, and, you know, if you get have a credit card, you can pay that credit card back off in, in four to eight weeks. And then do it again. Yeah. Um, Raina, let me talk a little bit about territories. Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> okay. This program is totally different than direct mail. Meaning, I do, I don't even know these days, three, four, five hundred different workshops uh, per month across the nation on Social Security, general retirement, Medicare, any kind of topic that financial advisors are doing it. And I will have advisors, I might have three or four different advisors that are all within, you know, 10, 20 miles of each other doing different workshops through direct mail. Digital is totally different, meaning I can only have one person in an area uh, doing it because it is the same ads, it is the exact same promotion. So, um, it's not right for me to sell it to two different advisors in a certain area that are doing it within, you know, uh, you know, three or four weeks of each other. The response is going to be bad for both of them. So what I do is I let somebody try it in their area. If you like it, you will basically have to sign a contract and agree that you're going to do a certain number of them during a year, but nobody else is going to do it in your area. Um, I've only been doing this for about six months, and I have a lot of areas that I cannot do it in. Uh, Dallas is totally gone. Uh, almost all of Tennessee, Nashville, Knoxville, um, uh, Cookville, uh, Chattanooga, um, uh, good portions of Atlanta, Tampa, um, a lot of cities. I've got advisors already doing it. They've having so much success that they've basically just taken the whole city, and I can't do marketing for other advisors with this particular program. So one thing, one thing there, Jeff, uh, they can do one with me in my territory, right? What do you mean? Well, I mean, if they, if, if they wanted to split the territory with me or if I wanted to, if they, uh, cause some of my agents are in the same geographic area. Uh, could I be the host and let sure. them come in? Okay. Sure. Right. Sure. But yeah, so, for some so, reason, Tennessee is, uh, um, you know, I got one particular guy who I've mentioned to you, Randall, that does it uh -huh. in, uh, Cook Bowl, he does it, you know, you've halved up basically Knoxville with him. Um, mm -hmm. I have two people in uh, Nashville, um, one in Johnson, Johnson City, I think, and now Chattanooga. So it's uh, it's really popping up in Tennessee. And then I've got two or three fighting over territories in Atlanta. So it's, uh, you know, it's a good problem to have from my end. But, um, you know, well, I, have to protect, I have to protect the agents that are doing it. So. I can only have one agent in, in a, like a 20 mile radius doing it. Okay. So Chattanooga, right up, right up the road from Chattanooga is a town called Cleveland. Um, and then right up uh, tw another 20 miles is a town called Athens. And then uh, um, I think uh, then you get into Teleco, which, which is what we've done. Uh, and then you get into Farragut. Uh, but yeah, the other guy's doing it in Farragut, I think. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, so you didn't mention Oak Ridge. Are you familiar with the Oak Ridge area? I am not. Well, <clears throat> but Randall, there is another solution. <clears throat> if some of these areas are small, <clears throat> if they're small, it doesn't make sense. The $3,500 program is too costly. There's not enough people there to market to. So what you could do is a direct mail campaign, um, which would be more cost effective because it's going to cost you less money. Let's say, for example, you might only have 3,000 people to market in an area that are meeting the criteria that, that you're wanting to you know, get in front of. Well, you know, I have direct mail campaigns that I'm doing for people uh, for well awareness and trust. Um, you know, that would cost, you know, 3,000 pieces would cost you, you know, less than $1,600. And uh, uh, you could hit the people that, you know, that that you would want to market in that area. Where Facebook, okay. the $3,500 program would be too cost effective because it would not be cost effective because there's not enough people there to market to. Okay, so so we're not set at $3,500. We can just tell you what we need to accomplish. No, what if I we did less than that, we could do it with direct mail. Okay, so so that that's good. I didn't know that, and I think that I think that's uh, a, a good good thing for licensees to know. Yeah, in smaller uh, areas, and uh, with the nonprofit, um, which I told you about, it saves you twelve cents per mailer by using nonprofit postage, and it gets you a much better response. My competitors charge. Uh, if any of y'all are familiar with mail, you're probably paying sixty six to seventy five cents for mailers. Um, I run between 48 and 55, depending on what the mailer is. So I'm usually about 15 to 20 cents cheaper than my competition. Okay. And there's, there's several people on this, uh, uh, on this webinar right now that, that uh, would benefit a lot from talking to you uh, and just didn't know you existed. And, and it was important for me to be sure that, that they knew that, that they could talk to you. Uh, and I, I wanted to share my experience with you. I, I, uh, I'm really excited about it. You know, if, if we use our 1073 rule where where uh, if you have 10 appointments and you're going to sell seven estate plans and get three back in sales that average a minimum of $5,000 and you do one a month, you're, you're looking at a $20,000 a month income, pretty much uh, not guaranteed, but you, you've got a shot at that. Uh, but it could be fifty or $60,000 a month. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I told you, you know, the one guy, you know, that I told you that you're, that you, uh, uh, that you're splitting Knoxville with, um, he did $2.3 million in annuities in January. Cool. Now he does, he does three different programs with me. He does the will awareness program. He does a social security program. <clears throat> and he also does a, an annuity dinner program. So he, he does a lot of marketing, but he's doing a ton of business and, yeah. uh, you know, it takes money to make money, but this particular program is the only thing out there that you can basically recoup your money within 30 days by doing the uh, the online, uh, you know, uh, trust program. There's no other marketing out there that you can, you know, that you can get your money back in 30 days. And there's a difference between marketing and sales, but I, I think your, your program is one of the best marketing programs. And I'll just go ahead and brag on myself. I think our presentation, the Family Tree Asset Positioning Go-To First Interview, is the ideal presentation to get people to want to make an appointment with you because nobody else is approaching them on that level. So, so you know, uh, it's just important for everybody to be aware of that and, and that you have the script, you have the agenda, you have the PowerPoints. Uh, all you got to have, the only thing missing is, is implementation. And and this is a way, you know, uh, for thirty five hundred dollars, you can go in and guarantee implementation, uh, and have it done professionally, uh, and, and have everybody called and and everybody confirmed, and and know that you've got a certain number of people, uh, just like that monkey throwing that rice and that, uh, that sand in the water. You can scoop up the people who want to talk to you. So. Uh, I think we take another couple of questions. I don't want to tie you up, Jeff, but uh, do you, will you take another question or two? Sure, of course. Is there any more out there? I have another one. As far okay. as, this is Susan, as far as the direct mail, if it were that option, what can you say again what the, how, how many, um, what, what the cost is and then the pieces that are, that are mailed? Um, yeah. Well, it depends on, like, if you're doing a postcard, like a six by 11 postcard, that's going to cost you around 49, 50 cents, depending on quantity or an eight and a half by 11, 
uh, is going to run you 53 and a half cents. These are full color mailers. Um, I use a different mailing list than all my competitors. Um, mine works better. Uh, just to talk a little bit about mailing list, if you've got a minute, all my competitors use what's called an IPA list, which stands for investable personal assets. And sounds like the perfect list, but uh, people's taxes are like HIPAA laws, meaning uh, there is no public information out there on how much somebody makes per year or what they have in a 401k, IRA, 403b, or whatever it might be. Um, so all those lists that all my competitors are using are basically a survey list where I use what's called a net worth gold list. The technical definition is assessed home values, lifestyle, and credit. So all the people we're mailing to are homeowners. They tend to have credit. They tend to have money. Uh, and on my list, I have a lot of people that are on this list that aren't on the IPA list. So I tend to get a better response, a better quality person that comes in. Okay. And then and I'll target there, ages. is there follow-up with the direct mail too? How does that look? Any type of follow-up? Uh, with a, with the direct mail, um, we have a 24 seven reservation system that they can call online. They can either a live operator or they can register online. Um, the digital one is all done online, but then you will have access to the dashboard uh, in that. If you're doing a live workshop, you would need, if they're doing it by mail, you need to follow up with them and uh, uh, remind them uh, about the workshop coming up or giving them a call. I also have a service that can do that for 130 bucks, but a lot of times, a lot of people like to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. What is the population? What's the population base you need to support the Facebook program? Uh, good question. Um, well, let me ask Randall. Uh, Randall, what's the population in Knoxville? Well, it depends well, on how you count it. Um, anywhere from 300 to 500,000, depending okay. on. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I'm doing it for a little, for a guy, uh, Bart Williams in Tyler, Texas, which is pretty small. Um, and we've had to, had, had to go out 30 or 40 miles, but I'm getting, um, you know, 150 to 200 people to sign up. So as long as you've got, you know, 40, 50,000 people within a 30 or 40 mile radius, um, you know, we can make it work. Well, you had said that basically Nashville was already locked up. I'm a, Nashville I'm is, a, yeah. I've got okay, two different I, groups in Nashville. I'm a suburb of Nashville. I am in a different county, but I adjoin Nashville. Well, let's that, see, I'm know, doing them in, I know Smyrna, uh, Murfreesboro, um, a couple other ones. I, I'm doing them all over Nashville. Having great success. Uh, you know, unfortunately for you, you know, I, I, Nashville is locked up. But I can so still do it with mail. Well, but no, that's why I if I'm in a different county that adjoins, that Davidson County is Nashville, but right. I'm in a totally separate county that is an adjoining county. Would what that city be are you in? Huh? Hendersonville, Tennessee. Um, I don't know. You'd have to reach out to me uh, and I can look and see. Uh, I'm not, you know, very versed on exactly everything in Nashville, but... I can tell you if if that is open or not, but uh, it right. would take a little bit of research to find out. Go ahead, Mr. Gates. Okay, Mr. Gates, you want to try one more time in Alabama? Hello. Hello. Is this is this uh, Joe? Yeah, this is Joe. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can okay. Tony, yeah, can you mute yourself? Tony, can you mute yourself real quick? You're getting feedback. Okay. Oh. If if you want to do a there we go. Okay, go ahead, Joe. You want to do a direct mail in a smaller area about what would be the rate of return on a direct mail? So um, you, want to... you you talk about you're talking about obviously for well awareness. Um, yeah, probably between a 0.7 and a 1% response. Okay. That's good. And that's, that's with a non-dinner, strictly educational. Okay. 
Like I've got one going right yeah, now in St. Pete. Um, he did the digital. He's actually an attorney, and he prefers to do mail. He sent out 12,000 uh, mailers, and his workshop is next week. He's got a – I'll have to check, but he's got about 90 people signed up uh, on 12,000 mailers. But it's, uh, you know, it's strictly educational and non-dinner, and he did it with mail instead of digital. And the one well, thing, that, when, you're, well, when you are doing direct mail versus digital, I can get you a better quality person that will come in. Um, it's a little bit more of a hodgepodge with uh, with the Facebook because I can't I can't put as many criteria to qualify the people as I can with direct mail. What if it's at a lo local restaurant that people know, not a high end restaurant, but one that a lot of people go to? Would you what, increase? What's your the, question? Uh, pool? What would be Joe, a dinner? Joe, most of these are, are workshops and you don't have to buy dinner. Yeah, there, no, no dinner. No dinner, Joe. No reason to buy them dinner. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm getting, I would, I'm getting, I'm getting you... plenty of people. I'm getting plenty of people to show up. It's strictly educational. You're not, you don't have to give them water crackers. They get nothing and like it. Just free information. We gave them water. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're nicer than most. <laughs> okay. And, and thank and, you very uh, much. And an ink pen. Uh, okay. Anybody else out there? Lonnie asks, what time zone are you in, Jeff? Oh, I'm in, uh, I'm in Florida. Uh, Eastern time. Folks, I just want to let you know, this process fits perfectly for those looking for people they have not done business with in the past. And at the same time, if it's properly implemented, can be used as a way to invite those you have done business with in the past. So, so if, 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 uh, Jeff's going to put 30 or 40 people in a room three or four times in, uh, in, in a given week. It, it's okay to go ahead and invite some of your clients to come be guests. Is that right? Do they just won't show up on your list, Jeff? Is that right? I'm, I'm sorry, Randall. I missed the question. Okay. You, you sent me a list of all the people that, that were going to attend. Yes, but sir. I could have, I could have invited some of my clients that live in that area uh, for the same, for the same uh, showing. And they just would not have been on your list. Oh, of course. Yeah, if you've got room, you know, you can always invite your clients to go, you know, uh, to come and bring a guest. And sometimes to have a client in the crowd is a good thing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So anyway, uh, those of you out there listening, you know, uh, I know you got a tight budget, some of you. Uh, but but if, you, if you're looking to approach people that have not done business with you in the past, uh, maybe fifteen or sixteen hundred dollars with Jeff on direct mail, or thirty five hundred dollars on the digital marketing is a good idea. You know, I don't think you'll lose money on it. Uh, so don't. I wouldn't be afraid of a credit card uh, because you're going to, you know, at, at, at the uh, what you can earn on selling an estate plan, you only have to sell two or three or four to to break even. And yeah, that's not. That, that's what's beautiful about this program. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, well, uh, okay, so, okay, so go ahead, Joe. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, that's just feedback. Lisa, could you go ahead and mute Joe? Joe's all back. Back. I was going to say one thing real quick. Okay. Um, I've muted so him. One, okay, perfect. Thanks, Lisa. One quick thing. This is Jay here on Randy's computer. Um, so Jeff recommends, so they do all the contacting, getting them to fill the room. He His team did recommend calling people beforehand the the night before you know to confirm and you know that we can get them uh you know that to, to confirm that they're coming and i did do that on all of ours so that's something to keep in mind is you likely want to call through everyone the day before and that'll improve your and jeff i don't know if you want to speak to that at all yeah that it, it that surely doesn't hurt we give uh uh we do try to call once but um you know a lot of times we don't get in touch with them you know, we, we, we send them out five emails and a text, but it never hurts to have that personal touch the night before to call them and, and remind them. And uh, we were able to as well from that, because some of them weren't able to attend, but then they got to talk and then they're going to come and have a meeting. And they're just going to skip the whole seminar. So you might, yeah. you might run into that too, by making that call, something to keep in mind. Yeah. I mean, you can't get much better than calling them. They want to come in on a one-on-one -on -one call, one-on-one -on -one conference. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to encourage everybody to realize that 
that uh, I don't think I could have done that webinar by myself. I had to have a couple of people there to help me greet, to help me entertain and, and uh, help me talk to other people. Uh, some people may try to do it by themselves, but but I found it better uh, just to have a couple of people there to help me get it done. Mm -hmm. So anyway, folks, um, Jeff, I appreciate you coming on to the show today. Uh, you, you've taught us a lot, and I, I hope I hope our listeners out there will say this is the right thing and a good thing to do. Uh, you know, some of you have been with me for a year, year and a half, and I've always said, let me teach you to hunt. Well, usually when you go hunting, you're doing one-to-one. -one. If you do a group marketing program, you're still hunting. You're just, you're just acting and thinking like that monkey I told you about earlier in the show. He scooped up the sand and the rice and threw it out in the water. And, and what he didn't want was the sand and it sunk to the bottom and all that rice floated to the top. And all he had to do was scoop it up. And then he had a handful of prospects that all were like-minded and were interested in what they needed to do. And now you've got this big, long list that you can go through. And, and uh, you know, if you don't make any money, it's probably your own fault. But anyway, uh, that's what I call the cycle of success. And, and you've got to have uh, a system. You've got to have something that you can implement. And you've got to have mentors like Jeff uh, and, and some of our licensees here who have had good experience in things who will show you what we can do. So anyway, Jeff, is there anything else you want to say before you get to run no, off? No, other than, you know, just one thing that makes my stuff work so much better than my competition is that uh, it's the nonprofit. Um, you know, I'd like to emphasize that. I mean, all these marketing pieces, whether it's digital or whether it's mail, it all comes from the nonprofit, which gives you instant credibility. It gets you a better response. The people come in uh, friendly and wanting to learn. And, uh, you know, there's just nothing out there for $3,500 that's going to get you in front of 70, 80, 90 people. It's uh, yeah. it's really it's just the best thing going out there. And, you know, I really appreciate Randall giving me the chance to speak with y'all. And they show up on time and they want to make eye con contact and they want to tell you that they a lot of them are there with a problem on their mind. You know, you can't you can't get a better choice than that with somebody who's already looking for a solution. They don't know the answer. And then you do a presentation that shows them the answer. And and they're going to miss the opportunity if they don't if they don't seize it. So, Jeff, I appreciate you talking to us. I All hope right. you get off the phone. Yeah, calls. let me know in the future. Anytime you, you want me to speak again, I'm always always uh, willing. Well, I'm sure we will. And I appreciate you. Thanks a lot, right, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. So, you know, people, uh, if you're out there, if you're out there still listening, uh, the, what, what you saw today was our version of marketing for workshops or work marketing by workshops uh, using will awareness as your topic. And we do want to thank you for attending. And has anybody else got any questions for me before I sign off here? Uh, there's nothing more in the chat. Okay. Well, you know what? That was a good show and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something and I hope you spent $3,500 and make 35 to 70,000. Uh, but you know, you, uh, one thing you have to do to make this work is you have to see yourself being successful at it and you have to want to help the people that attend. If that's who you are, that it's a minimal, minimal investment to make. And it, uh, I did it. I'm going to do it again. Uh, I'll keep you posted on what's going on and the success we have. And other than that, I'm going to see you next Tuesday at three o'clock. Hey, show Randy. Up and, yes. Randall, I apologize. There's like four questions on the chat. I don't know if you see those or not. Well, well, I'm I'm about halfway blind. Uh, uh, Lisa, you want to run them off or? Uh, sorry, I must have missed them. Let me take another what look. Can you ask her what questions she's? Well, what questions did, did you see that you wanted answered? Uh, I'm reading it and it says for direct mail, what's the cost minimum spend? Okay. And that's about 15 or $1,600. Then the next question is what is the best location for these? From I like Neil the library. I like the library, but he also uh, talked about the uh, uh, recreation centers or right. senior citizen centers, anything that, that people congregate in. Uh, we can use uh, small college campuses, uh, I like the libraries better because of the atmosphere. I apologize for that. Um, then the next question from Mr. Adams is Jay will send Jay, will you send us the agenda format Randall used in the PowerPoint to use already, for the workshop? 
Yeah, so I already uploaded the agenda into there because I have that on my computer. Randy has the PowerPoint on his. I believe we're going to bundle it all together and likely make that available on the on the website for you, and we'll send it to attendees here. I imagine we're doing that, right, Randy? Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. Only thing I'd ask you to do is please use it, and 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 uh, uh, we don't we don't mind uh, uh, experimenting on what we do, and and we always want to to make something work before we ask you to do it. And folks, this works. This is this is a good investment to make, or I wouldn't be here talking to you about it. Okay, evidently somebody answered, but I didn't see it. You know how the That's screens okay. are, but somebody you, made a response. Thank you. Okay, okay. anything else? Uh, there's a question now that's just popped up from Susan. It says, uh, $1,500 for how many DM pieces? Well, uh, Jeff's already signed off, and I don't know the answer to that. Uh, we'd probably have to ask him with his phone number, 407-592-7420 or his email address, uh, Jeff Mills at something. Um, it's, in the chat. it's in the chat. So uh, I don't, and Susan, I don't know the answer to that. I'm sorry. But it works. Uh, Jeff's number and email address further down in the chat again. Okay. All righty. I love all these people. Is, this is good technology. It's Jeff's email address again. Um, and I got it, Lisa. Okay, thanks. Okay. Any, yeah. any other questions? Um, All right. Michael it's, says it's, thank you. Well, uh, I, listen, I want to say thank you to everybody that attended. Spend some money if you have it. If you don't, listen to me about how to do the the suspect prospect client advocation uh, without spending any money. Both ways work. That, that's all I know to say to you. Um, if you if you don't have the income that you want, uh, follow the one or the other of these two advices and 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 apply it to those who have done business with you in the past or those who have not done business with you in the past. I I'll be honest with you. I really enjoyed looking at the number of people who were going to attend. That there were seventy seven people that I had not done business with in the past who came to my workshops voluntarily and participate. And we had a high rate of, of requests for appointments. And I expect a pretty high rate of return on the $3,500 investment. I will tell you that, that uh, we had to spend a little bit of money for supplies and stuff. So I think you, you know, you, you probably ought to uh, plan on three or $400 in supplies. If you're going to do it first class. Anything uh, else? Randall, what is your approximate number of appointments so far? Well, we had 33 asked for appointments and, and, and uh, Jay and Benton are working on those right now. Uh, and, and see, that was just last week. So we haven't had that many appointments yet. Some people come in, uh, we've already sold one trust. Uh, and that one trust, I'll be honest with you, they didn't have a lot of money to, to do a back end sale. Uh, I'll have a better report for you next week, Tony. Sure. Wonderful. Thanks. But, but there were 33 people, uh, uh, turned in their forms and said, yes, we want an appointment. And and uh, some have even given us referrals already for people who didn't attend that we've got appointments with. So I'm, I'll be busy boy next week. Yeah, 33 raised their hands, 17 is scheduled so far. Okay. So, awesome. so if you wanted to have, you know, 17 appointments um, within a week of after your webinar, uh, if you're ready to handle them, let's go do them. And, and Tony, I work with you on that town. Over. I'll see if I can't get uh, Hendersonville included. All right. Thanks. R Randall. Yes. I see. Uh, yeah. Finding you. Um, could you include like the list of what, that you had to, you know, pick up that you took with you so we know what kinds of uh, additional pieces we might need to take to, to the workshop? Yeah. It's the same things you would take to an interview it's the agenda, the confidential. Um, uh, you know, you just take the same pieces that, but we, we do have them on, on a piece of paper. Uh, Jay, if you can get them together and send them a copy of what we, the, those four pieces of paper that we sent. I already included it. Okay. No, I, I put it in. Okay. It's already in so the, you took, in, you took ink pens or pencils or what else? Yeah, I, took ink, take? Ink, I took ink pens and I took a lot of water. Every, was, every seat had that handout that I posted in there. I printed that on heavier cardstock, double-sided. So each each seat had the the two pieces of paper, one little little bottle of water, one of those half bottles, and one pen. 
Okay. Heads up. Okay. And then they got and then they got to hear the best presentation. It's the family tree asset positioning go to first interview. If you will just use it, people are there. They they know they have a problem. They don't know what the answer is. And when when you when they're finished or when you're finished with the presentation, they will know what the solution is and they will want you to help them get it. That's how simple this is. Anything else? Hey, law. Well, uh, I'm going to go another 30 seconds and I'm going to get out of here. I got somebody waiting to talk to me. Thank oh. you. Oh, oh, yeah. You know what we did at the end? We gave everybody a round to it. Okay. Because <laughs> we, we told them, I, I, I kind of slipped it in on a couple of times. I said, I know why you don't have it. You haven't gotten around to it, have you? And they all shook their head. And I said, well, now you're going to have one. And, and, uh, uh, Benton and Jay gave them all a round to it. And you know what? They made them laugh and they held on to them. And I think that increased the number of appointments we got. So you folks that haven't ordered your round to it, I'm out of round to it, but I have another 13, 1200 or 1300 coming. Uh, they're $25 for a hundred plus $10 to ship them. If you want the generic ones, if you want to order them on your own and put your own information, it's okay. It won't hurt my feelings. You go to pens.com, P-E-N-S.com and you can order them any way you want to. Uh, I think if you order a thousand, they're about 19 or 20 cents a piece. They uh, plus shipping, they're about 22 cents a piece. So I'm not making a lot of money on them. Uh, I might have made three cents on each one. What was uh, that but, website again? P I N S dot com? No, P, P E N S dot com. Okay. And they, they've got, you know, they're an advertising uh, uh, company for pens and, and, but I like to round to it. It's a good, it's a good thing. I got one in my pocket right now and there's one sitting on my desk. Give them out. People laugh and they know who you are and what you do. Anything else? Uh, Michael wants to know where is the PowerPoint, but Jay's just answered him. <laughs> where, where, where is the PowerPoint, Jay? It's all, it's on your computer alone. We need to, Oh, it's on my computer. Yep. Uh, well, I'll try and get it out in the next day or so. How's that? I I, uh, I thought I had sent it to everybody, but I, I, at least I'm going to send it to you and let you send it to all the licensees. Sounds great. I will do. And, and so, so, Mike, you'll get it sometime tomorrow. Yeah. And Lisa, you can go ahead and grab that handout I posted in there and you can include that with it so everyone gets both of those. Folks, okay. you got everything everything you need to make this work. Uh, and, you know, uh, it's all laid out for you. The roadmap's all there. You just have to decide, is it worth $3,500? If I had uh, uh, $350,000, I'd buy it all for you. I just don't have that to spare. Um, but $3,500 is not much to spend to, to have the kind of return that this thing can do for you if you do it right. And remember what I say, emulate, don't innovate. Do what we did. And you will find it to be successful. Change it, and that's up to you. Anybody else? Uh, Liz says thank you, Randy, and all. Well, great, great. Thank you all. Um, it's getting close to bye bye time. Thank you. Thank right, you so everybody. much. Thanks, okay, Randy. We'll talk, we'll talk to you next week. All right. Bye bye. Thanks, Lisa.